and scrap metal. Now, a small group of fanatics risk everything on a quest to find the precious few that remain. Hi, there it is. Restore them and fly them again. Some people collect stamps, some people collect coins. I collect airplanes. It just got out of control. To find the planes, these treasure hunters claw their way through hell. Uh, There's always the element of danger to get to those spots. <laughs> Pretty scary, but you want something bad enough, that's where you gotta go to get it. Hey. It's a race. Scrap dealers against those determined to save history. Yeah, hey, what a bloody beauty. You know, you get bitten by this bug and you're just infected for life. Virginia businessman Jerry Yagan has amassed his own private air force. I've always had an interest in aviation. The first fighter I flew would do things I never imagined that an aircraft could do. Since then, Jerry's been obsessed with rare high-performance warbirds. He made his money running trade schools and spends it raising historic aircraft from the dead. The difference between me and the Smithsonian is that my planes fly. Their planes don't. And it's just so exhilarating. It sort of makes the hair stand up on the back of your neck a bit. Murray Griffiths runs a restoration shop in Wangaratta, Australia. And Jerry's his biggest customer. Jerry will be pleased with that. Restoring these planes requires reverse engineering. If a part is missing or destroyed, they create it, usually without blueprints. It takes an artist to be able to do something like that. An artist. Beautiful. And an adventurer. Murray has trekked to the farthest corners of the earth to find airplanes. Wouldn't be much fun if it was just straightforward. It's difficult work in dangerous, isolated places. But for these men, preserving the past is worth it. This is the P-40 Warhawk. We got it out of the jungle and restored it. Here it is today. You've got to find them and get them before the bloody scrap dealers turn them into beer cans. Jerry's latest obsession is to get one of the most important and deadly fighters flown during the war. The P-38 Lightning. Built by Lockheed, the P-38's dual tail design allowed for fast maneuvers at high altitude. Its combination of machine guns, rocket launchers, and bombs made it a true killing machine. The Germans called it the Fort Tail Devil. They are a highly sought after aircraft in that there's not many of them actually flying. Jerry needs a P-38 in his collection to make it sort of more complete. Hello? Jerry, Murray, how are you going? The search yeah. always starts with a rumor. These planes aren't marked on any maps. I heard that a few P-38 Lightnings had been found in Papua New Guinea. In World War II, the Japanese and the Allies battled to control the island, a strategic base for operations in the Pacific. Many P-38s went down there. I asked Murray to go there and try to find one for me. Adam Maley works in Jerry's maintenance shop in Virginia. Anna, I have something I gotta talk to you about. Adam's a great mechanic, and I really want one of my people there to help Murray get it done. The rainy season is developing, and we don't have very much time to get it out of there. Adam, I really want this airplane. I'm your man. I felt like a lot of weight on my shoulders. I didn't want to let him down. Murray makes sure work on other planes will continue in his absence. With that door open? Especially yep. on the Bell P-39 Aerocobra they're restoring for Jerry. But all the, all the latches are going to go in yet. The Aerocobra was a U.S. fighter with its engine housed behind the pilot to allow for a massive cannon up front. Of all the planes being restored, it's the one Jerry wants done first. Shiggy babe. 
I think I need to make a new one of these. Why? This is Green. Yes. Reverse engineering without detailed plans means trying, failing, trying again. It's going to be a pain in the ass machining that out, but... And they're always under a deadline. When I get back, we really need to have this wing looking like a wing. All right, it's in your hands. At least we'll know who to blame, won't we? You. <laughs> <laughs> I'll call you on the, on the bat phone, eh? All right. From the jungle. See you later. <laughs> takes off from the US. And Murray from Australia, heading to Papua New Guinea, a South Pacific island the size of California. Most of it's dense, rugged, unmapped. One of the world's least explored and dangerous countries. Filled with man-eating crocodiles, the most venomous snakes on Earth, and deadly tropical diseases like malaria. It's literally in the middle of nowhere. Something goes wrong out there, you buggered. They meet in the capital, Port Moresby. You can see the storms building now in the hills. They've got about two weeks before torrential rains begin, bringing washed out bridges and downed communications. G'day, mate. Good afternoon, sir. Is um, Adam Maley booked in here? Or Mr. Maley is upstairs in room 22. Thanks, mate. You're I get a phone call and it's Murray, and so I've come downstairs and met him in the hotel lobby. Murray? Adam. Adam Maley. Nice you, to mate? meet you. Hey. How are you? Hey. Me and him hit it right off. Oh. <laughs> Any crocodiles? Oh, shit. Oh, hey. Hey, Benzie. How are you going? Hey, good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see Benzie's an old mate. An Aussie who's lived in PNG for years now. Yes, sir. He speaks pidgin English, which most locals understand. He also knows what to avoid and when to run. Well, when you look around this jungle, you think this is beautiful. But it can be dangerous if you don't know where you're going and what you're doing. So, Murray, where are we heading to first? Ah, uh, down the Gulf Country, Kikori. Murray has heard there's a P-38 lightning somewhere along one of the rivers near Kikori, 250 miles northwest of Port Moresby. Kikori's just a, a village, really, with a trade store on the side of the Kikori River. There's an aircraft supposedly in the bush there. But he's not sure where exactly. They'll just have to get on the ground and improvise. When we landed at Kikori, the pilot and I went off to get some fuel. Burnsy and Adam headed off into town to secure a boat. All these people started uh, following us, wondering, you know, what we were doing there. And... Bust your ass on this one. Man. Ah, oh, damn. I'm real particular about what I eat, you know. That's your luck, man. There's some things that I won't eat. I went to Red Lobster back home and uh, ordered a hamburger. <laughs> you gotta try these things. You're here in this country, you gotta try them all. Good for you. Take the skin off. They're good on a hot day. <laughs> And make a glass of water. Ah. They find the trade store and a man who says he has a boat to rent. This boat ends up being a huge party barge. Promises and handshakes are the only contract, so they can only hope it'll all come together. I get seven. The earlier the better. We bring it out and uh, we get ready for tomorrow. It's really calling for a cold beer. But they still don't know where the plane is and need to find locals who do. Adam gets a hit. And you've seen the airplane? Yeah, I have seen that airplane. Oh, I see Tony coming down here now, we'll tell him. I introduced this guy to Burns, and I says, hey, uh, this gentleman says he's from this village down the river, and there's a P-38 visible at the edge of the shore. Oh, and also, he said that he had a part of it in a, in a hut. Personally, I thought that was a pretty good lead. The man agrees to show up in the morning and guide them to the plane. They hope this lead pans out. But in the bush, there are no guarantees. What kind of shape is this one supposed to be like? I don't know. It's only, we won't know until we get there. I mean, there's nothing out there, just mangroves and sago swamp. Yeah, locations of aeroplanes anywhere in remote areas like this, it's just a, a word of mouth thing. I mean, it's a matter of getting out there and asking.
In the morning, the boat is supposed to be fueled up and ready to pull out. Look at him back, here. But there's a problem. What's wrong now? We got it for this? For sake. Why fit under the bridge? They had to disassemble half the barge and to get it underneath this bridge because it was high tide. How's that, boys? That'll go under now? Hey? Just try up there. It might be a bit, that bridge might be a bit higher up there. It still wouldn't fit under the bridge, so we put a bunch of people and equipment on it to try and sink it a bit. Then it finally went under, and man, you couldn't have slid a hoof nail between the wheel and the top of that bridge now. We were delayed probably an hour, hour and a half. Nothing's impossible, it just takes a little longer. Lindsay, you're a bloody champion. They hire some guides to make sure they stay out of trouble. It's the jungle, but it's still someone's property. You definitely don't want to go walking on, you know, someone's land. Following the local man's directions, they head deeper and deeper into the jungle. I was the land before time. You should have bought the rifle and we could have some skins. Yeah. Make a nice gator belt, couldn't you? This ain't fun now. Surrounded by crocs and blindly following a complete stranger, they push on determined to find the buried treasure that has sat untouched for more than 60 years. If it's even there. Jerry Yegan's collection of historic warbirds is impressive, but it's not complete. So he sent his team to Papua New Guinea on a quest to get him a rare fighter called a P-38 Lightning, a cornerstone of the Allied Aerial Forces. Once restored, it will be one of a handful still flying. Problem is, I send these guys out in the middle of nowhere. On my dime, Murray's got a satellite phone, but it doesn't always work. Hello? Murray! In Papua New Guinea, the first lead is a local man who says there's a P-38 submerged in a river south of Kikori. Still here. Yeah. And you can see the bubbles coming up. And the story goes that the airplane beached right there, and it was right at the edge of this village. How deep is this water? But the tide was in, so we couldn't see it. So I found a bit of junk in the bottom of the barge. We threw it over to see if we could get metal hitting metal. Just back up a bit, Bernie. Oh, just, oh yeah. It's metal just there, it's right under us. Yeah, I just hit metal there. There's something there. But what? But I, I have, have a tail, a tail up there in the house. Oh, okay. We have a look? Yeah. <laughs> the tail fin will let them know if it's a P-38 lying in the murky water. Oh. Jado. That's a that's a drone. <laughs> Murray, that's a drone. That, that ain't, uh, that's definitely not yep. a P-38. <laughs> I couldn't believe my luck when, <laughs> when they showed us the wing of a, a toy aeroplane or a missile or something from a much different era of aircraft. Not wartime, this one. 
They're thankful for the locals' efforts, but it's a bust. That was a big letdown. Yeah, well, clearly we're not going to get to recover an aeroplane here. They can't give up. Murray calls to prep the chopper for the next leg of their search. We're heading back to Kikori. You, you head back too. They'll regroup, then head west to a place called Baimuru, where Murray heard another tale of a crashed P-38 Lightning. And the story was that the pilot bailed out after being attacked by the Japanese, and the plane went down somewhere near the river. We better have better luck at Baimuru tomorrow, I tell you. Well, I reckon if we don't, have a better day at Baimuru, I want to go home. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. When he gets a satellite signal, Murray checks in with the shop about Jerry's Aerocobra. His team of experts is hard at work. Attention to every last detail is essential. When restoring to airworthiness, any mistake could mean a fatal crash. But they also have to hit their deadlines. Jerry's extremely keen to see this airplane out and, and flying. Hey, Adam. Hey, get that West Virginian ass out here. Hey, let's get the show on the road, eh? Baimuru is a village on the Baimuru River. It's got a bit of a fishing industry there. There's said to be a P-38 there in the bush. That's about all we know about it at this stage. What do you think, we're going to find something or what? Of course, with the master. <laughs> right. Ahead lies a maze of tributaries to navigate it will need something more maneuverable than the barge. How many canoes we need? Two will fit? Yeah? Two is enough. Okay. 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 Dugout canoes fit the bill, but they're easy to tip and won't protect against crocs. Yeah, I'm trying to be a tough guy, but I put one foot in it and the thing's so unstable, I, I, nah, this ain't me. Wow, oh, that's a two by four. Alligator bite that in half, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> no. They said, come on, mate, you'll be fine. Yeah, we're we'll getting it. Oh, man, that thing's dangerous. Right. You roll that over, you're going home in an alligator suitcase. I really, I didn't, I didn't like it. That's all right. <laughs> Murray! <laughs> Power! You just become a local. <laughs> Head up river a little bit further and then up this creek. It's very dirty water and it's renowned for having good populations of nasties like crocodiles and snakes. The venom from some snakes here can kill a man in less than 45 minutes. The crocs are just as dangerous. The locals call them puk puks. Puk Puk much prefer Americans. Puk Puk, that sounds like something going to eat you up. This is a truck. Okay. We've got to get off here. Yes, this way. This way. Come on, Burnsy. You're too old for this. I am getting too old for it, I tell you. Hey? Leave you at home next time. When we first landed, I think I said to Tony, oh, where in the hell are we at? He said, this is ass into the world, mate. And it was. OK, this is it. This is what it's all about. This is, this is the jungle. Walking that sort of bush is never, never like a walk in the park. 
<laughs> it'd be your worst nightmare, wouldn't it, if you had to walk out of this after crash landing your aeroplane? But you see the spines on this shit? Imagine coming down the parachute past that. And hell, it's unbelievable. It kill you. Now I've been in some, you know, pretty remote locations, but never where every step you take, there's something that can hurt you. Cool down, get in the water now and then. It's been a long day, slogging through blazing heat in a nearly impossible swamp. After walking all that way, I'm thinking, man, you better be able to get in it, start it up, and fly it out for me having to walk through this stuff. Finally. <laughs> Found him, boys. Ah, there you oh, go. Well done, well, boys. But the jungle does not give up her treasures easily. Finally. <laughs> ah, there you ah, go. Fine, well, fine, well, fine. There you go, Adam, B-38. What do you reckon? Yep. I don't think it's going to run. Radiator. That's a radiator right there. Or it could be oil cooler. You got a serial number on it, Adam? No, it just says elevator pulley 55L. That might be the a serial number could be run through records to learn how the plane yeah, went yeah. down and yeah, what happened to its pilot. Oh, nice. Without it, they know little about the man who crashed here. Were these Australian pilots or Yanks? American. American, were they? Yep. Australians didn't have any P-38s. We just showed the Yanks how to fly them. <laughs> they must be careful. Deadly Taipan snakes often nest in the wrecks. You uh, want to watch where you put your hands. If you get bitten out there, you've got a problem because there's no one to help you. Undercarry, wheel. What we really look for is something that's reasonably intact and holds as many components for the rebuild as possible. And this one isn't quite right. It's slammed in at a hell of a speed and angle. The parts are smashed. It's just not what we're looking for. We need to find something more complete to make it worthwhile. We'll leave it here, eh? Well, Bloody rain's pissing down. I think it's time we got out of this Sago swamp before it gets dark. What do you reckon, <laughs> hey fellas? Even with the best leads and the hardest work, sometimes it all goes to hell. Oh, it's bloody disappointing to have to go through all this and, you know, there's no pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Murray tries to keep morale up, but it's getting tough. And we've already been there for so many days and already looked at two airplanes that are hundreds of miles apart from each other and still nothing. I felt pressured because of what Mr. Yagan said, plus I give him a word. And, you know, we're running out of time. Rainy season coming. It's been over a week. No word from Murray. I can't get hold of him. I don't have any idea if a crocodile's eating him or eating the phone. It's really annoying. Oh, you right there, Burnsy? <sighs> oh, mate. Time to get home again, jiggity jig. <laughs> Win some, lose some, mate. 
There's always tomorrow, isn't there? Bloody hell, as if we didn't have enough problems. I somehow lost my bush knife yesterday. So now I need to go and look for a new one. Bush knife, your bush knife? Yeah, that's what we're looking for, Murray. The team needs to plan the next hunt. Yeah, that's a big one. They've heard that residents of a Catholic mission in the Central Highlands know of a P-38 there. So they'll head to the northern port town of Medang. You live here? Yeah, I live there, mate. We're well looked after there. Mayor of Medang. Mayor of Medang. Un unofficial, but... <laughs> We'll have some fun. The boys head to Medan. From there, they will drive to the Brahma mission at the base of the Owen Stanley Mountains, an area that saw heavy fighting in the war. Bernsey's got a business here in Medan. He rebuilds boats and things like that. He's got an empire here, don't he? Oh, yeah. <laughs> King of the sea. <laughs> Would you go to sea in that boat? Not without another boat. Yeah, yeah here's the office. In you go, in you go, Alan. Alright. I'll show you the map as soon as you We're here. So we track out across to here. Out there somewhere. The Brahmin's about there. Mm. The air aircraft's I think about three miles from the mission. Supposedly down on the river. That's where the pilot Anyhow, supposedly put it down. We're going to cross the Rami River somewhere. Mm. Yeah, about there. How are you cross the river? Okay. Good point. Good point. How are you going to cross the well, river? I don't know. There was a mission eaten by a cop there last year. Yeah. I mean, he was told not to swim across the river. So we'll see what this P-38 looks like, Adam. I hope it's in better shape than the last one we looked at. We're off. Kamikaze. Yeah. <laughs> The Brahma Mission is a Catholic boarding school with about oh, 800 students in the middle of nowhere. Brother Siegfried runs the place and has talked to people who've seen the P-38. It's in complete condition and the plane is under danger of being washed away. The name, name of the squadron commander and the pilot written on it, on yeah. the side, yeah. it's a long walk. And not the three miles Murray thought. Well, I think it's uh, five or six hours one way. <laughs> Fair walk, isn't it? We should have bought the chopper, we left it in Moresby. <laughs> It's a six hour walk, which means it's going to be that far back out. We're just going to have to uh, go for this walk and, and see what happens. Adam, we start early in the morning. At the village, there's one river and there's a swinging bridge like a suspension bridge and I mean you know I had in my mind at that, that you know that, that's obviously they don't use that anymore till I see people walking across and it's it looks like it's 50 feet off this rocky riverbed it was a oh, damn near a waterfall how am I going to handle this because I, I ain't getting killed On the way to the P-38, that's supposed to be near the Brahma mission, we came to this suspension bridge. We'll start walking across that and it's, I mean, you take a step and I mean, it's worse than the boats. It's rickety, there's boards missing. You know, and I'm thinking, I wonder what my mother's going to say when they got to call her and tell her to come at the bottom of some river. Oh, Burnsy! My shoes are slipping. At least it wakes you up before breakfast. Yeah, look, roast pig.
This airplane's supposed to be in good shape, which makes the long trek ahead more bearable. You wouldn't walk out of here, you'd be Just another place to die. Yeah, just find a comfy spot. The river. <laughs> Boy, I ain't looking forward to this. It doesn't look like it's very far across, but you really can't see the bottom. I'm thinking, oh man, got to be a crocodile or something in there. Take the fucking boots off. I'm leaving mine on. Why? I'll step on the only busted beer bottle out there. No, it won't be a beer bottle there. Many puk puk here? No puk puk. Only fish. We made it across, no worries. But the bloody leeches were a bit of a problem. He wanted to suck my blood dry. A little bit further, another river. This is a rama. Good book books in here. This might be the end of the road. There's really crocodiles in this one. Burnsy was, yeah, he was pretty hot about that. Then uh, one of the locals says, ah, you, you know, you cross on the log. You didn't tell me about the goddamn bridge. Oh, 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 fuck. I'm trying to walk across it in cowboy boots. Hey. <laughs> it's been four hours now in the heat and muck of the swampy jungle. The further we went, the trail kind of dissipated into nothing. I mean, not even a cow path to walk on. There's no sense of direction. I'm thinking, well, I hope somebody has actually seen this airplane. But the further we went, I was more like, I hope someone knows a way home. <laughs> Deep hole there. <laughs> At the onset, the guide said they knew the way, but now... We really don't know which way to go from here, and it seems the locals are a little bit lost also. We're in a bit of a difficult situation here with mud up to our nuts. Yeah. Six hours in, they face a tough call. They want to find that plane, but there's still the trek back. When darkness falls, the jungle turns from dangerous to deadly. I think we call it a day, Burnsy. <laughs> I'm up to my neck in mud now, and I don't want to cross that bridge in the dark tonight, Murray. Book book's in the dark. Too many crocodiles to get across this river. I'm off. Ugh. All right. It's just disappointing to not be able to find the aeroplane. Even if we did, I don't think we could be recovering it. The river's in flood. The swamp's too full. I felt my, my body just shutting down and I just put one foot in front of the other and just kept on walking and walking and walking. I didn't care if a crocodile bit me in half or not, I just, what, whatever. Jerry's going to be pretty let down, you know. Uh, it made me feel bad because I, I give the man my word, you know, and I, I wanted to come out of there with uh, something. Jerry is still trying to get through but it's getting to the point where he needs to cut his losses and bring the boys back. Oh, damn it. Nora, Nora, if Murray calls, keep him on the telephone. I want to talk to him. I don't want to miss his call. Find me wherever I am in the building. And with rainy season coming and no other leads, Murray's ready to call it quits too. Yeah. And this has been a disaster. We're well. back, we're licking our wounds, and 
Bernsey says, you know, 20 years ago, I was out in the western province. I saw an airplane at Arufi and at Ben's back, and they were in great shape. I know roughly where it is. What the hell, you know, are you kidding me? Well, we should have went there first. Yeah, it would have been nice if he had have told us about those. Our bugger's been holding out on us. Just as the trip seems a total bust, a new lead surfaces. This one, from the inside. Bernsey suddenly pipes up and says he happens to know where there's a couple of B-38s. I know roughly where it is. Saw them 20 years ago. Perfect condition. Oh, bastard. After two weeks of fruitless searching, everyone's a little weary. How's that going to be better than what we've seen so far? I know there's one around there somewhere. Mm. It's been 20 years. Even if Bernsey can recall where they were, there's no guarantee they're still there. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm inclined to think we should go and see if we can retrace his footsteps. You got to. That's all we're here to do. What's after that? Noah's Ark? Maybe. <laughs> this whole thing sounded like another wild goose chase. They head south to the island of Daru, their new staging area. Daru is a fishing village. It's not much in the way of uh, amenities. It does have jet fuel though, and that's one thing we need. Without that, we're not going anywhere down here. Some trip. The heavy rains are on their way. The clock was ticking. I thought, you know, let's just locate one, then we can come back later and get it. I reckon it's in there somewhere, right? Yeah. Murray wants to tell Jerry they're extending the trip to check one last place. Hello? Jerry! Murray, how you going? Murray! Oh, shit. Murray? F***ing sat phones, they always cut out when you don't want them to. Hello? Ah, oh, we cut off. I can't call him back. I can't reach him. This is extremely frustrating. At exactly the wrong time, Adam's body calls it quits. I didn't sleep at all that night. So I get up the next morning and I just started feeling very ill. I mean, nauseous and, and then just like flu. I said, oh no, this, this is bad. Hey, Adam. Hey, you ready to go? I ain't, I ain't feeling too hot. I, I, I don't know, I don't know whether Something I ate or... Oh, well, you be no good they hope it's not malaria, no, which begins with flu-like no, symptoms. No, Adam will rest, no, and if he gets worse, to try to get to a hospital in back Australia. Right, all right, well, look, take it easy, and when we get back, I'll come and show you some photos, hopefully, eh? OK, see you then. All right. Murray and Burnsy head out to check the two places Burnsy remembers seeing P-38s, one near the village of Arufi, the other in the remote lowlands called Bemsback. Oh, you can never have too much fuel in New Guinea. Run out of fuel out there, you're stuffed. There's not enough room in the chopper for the extra gas and passengers. So the pilot takes Bernsey to a roofie, then comes back to get Murray. We arrived back in a roofie and bloody hell, wouldn't you know it, Burnsy up to his old tricks, he's chased the Marys down and he's got them to do a sing-sing for us. Murray knows this is their last shot at finding a P-38 before the torrential rains hit. Bloody weather's not very good. Not ideal flying conditions. It's a huge area to search, and they don't have much time. I think 
Look at that boat up down there. They'll know where it is. Look, go around the bend there. Why don't we land there and ask them? Yeah, right. Eh? We find uh, uh, some locals in a banana boat going down the river and, and we land on, the, on a river bank. And we asked them if they knew where the aeroplane was. We are in talk before on war. Plane. Plane, yes. And uh, what we're saying is, right. we've come to the right spot, there's yeah. no doubt about that. Right, eh? And this bloke knows exactly where it is. Yeah, good deal. We were really only three or four miles from the site. like we were going to go home without laying eyes on a worthwhile aeroplane to recover. Hey, look, what's that? Oh, look at that. What a bloody beauty, eh? Oh, that's a propeller over there in the grass. You see that behind it? <laughs> we found the bastard. Well done. <laughs> To most, it looks like just a heap of metal. But to a restoration ace like Murray, it's a gold mine. There she is, Bernsey. There she is, mate. It's not bad, is it, hey? We found it. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, what a bloody beauty. Look at that. <laughs> Fan bloody tasty. Feel like a kid in a lolly shop. I found bloody what hell. it came to find. I can't believe we found it. <laughs> that is an aeroplane. Perseverance, perseverance. And that's the sort of thing that I'm looking for. Well, what a bloody ripper. I should have been a pilot 60 years ago, you know. Look at that. Control column, it still works. <laughs> you can still see the writing main, auxiliary. Over here we've got the throttle quadrant. Here's your propeller levers, look, they still work, still move. See where he's crashed here, he's hit the tree there. Yeah. He's just about to shit himself before he touched the ground, I'd say. <laughs> yeah, you know, good old Burnsy, eh? He, we pulled us through, we chased his hunch, and, and it's paid off. I think it's magic. Now that they've found the plane, they have to recover it, which means getting permits, bringing in equipment, hiring a crew. They'll return after the rainy season and get Jerry his plane. I'm feeling better that evening, and I was excited. I mean, we finally found one that's great for Jerry, but damn it, I, I wanted to lay my eyes on it for myself. What's it? Hey. Oh, Murray! <laughs> Back in Wangarata, Murray sees the Aracobra's wing is just about finished, as ordered. I think you see, we've done everything you asked. All right, very good. <laughs> so you're done now, you're gonna go and do something or you're gonna keep pestering me? It's too bloody cold down here. I think I might go back to the jungle again. That's a really good idea. Oh, you're I think a you should. <laughs> you're a bastard. You don't care about me, do you? Get folks? so you much more done when you're not here. You don't naughty. care about me. <laughs> Hello? Hey, Jerry, Murray. Where in the world have you been? No, we're back in Wangaratta. We got back, uh, got back last night, so... I finally hear from him, and I just don't like the way the conversation's going. Oh, well, it's a bit of a long story, really, but uh, the leeches were getting quite aggravated with it. I want to know if he's found the plane, but he's telling me some travelogue about his trip. Oh, probably 15 miles. Uh-huh. Half a mile through a swamp up to it. And then finally he tells me and, they uh, found the airplane. Oh, I couldn't believe it when we found that one. Murray, that sounds great. 
I think you found our airplane. You know, we turned a pretty bad situation around and, and it had a good outcome. After all my concerns, Murray came Get through there. for me again. The P-38 that I want for my collection is finally within my grasp. I guess so. And if it had been there for 60 some years, I'm sure it's going to be there in a few months when we go back and get it. Glad the book books didn't get you to. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> All right, I'll see okay. you. Okay, love you, mate. And now they celebrate. I decided I may as well do something that I really, really enjoyed. It's so much fun flying these things. get that airplane, rebuild it, so it can fly again. And there are plenty of other warbirds scattered throughout the world, waiting to be brought back.